Hi everyone, I'm Tom Bentley of Bentley Systems. Today we'll be walking you through your first context capture photo shoot. Context capture, and indeed all photogrammetry software, relies on high quality photographs with lots of overlap between the photos. Thus, you'll need to take the photos in an organized fashion to help ensure overlapping coverage of your subject. We'll teach you an effective method of photo taking that'll help you get good results when you start using context capture. Let's get started. Context Capture is capable of generating city-sized 3D models, but it is equally capable of capturing smaller objects at a more human scale, which is what we'll be doing here today. For this exercise, we'll be using an object similar to what you might find on your own bookshelf or around your home or apartment. To get started with your first 3D capture, we will need a camera, in this case an Apple iPhone, a target object on which to perform the 3D capture, and a place to do the actual photography. We can see on this bookshelf there are several good candidates for 3D capture. Although this printer is a reasonable candidate for 3D capture, it is rather plain. By the time we process this through context capture, all we'll have is essentially a black box. That seems like a lot of work for very little gain. Let's look at another candidate. This pencil sharpener is a good candidate, but again, maybe not the most exciting. Now here's something interesting. An old model of a pinion gear constructed from wood, probably made in the mid 20th century for some purpose lost to history. This wooden gear has a lot going on for it. It has an interesting shape, texture, and a nice patina. Plus, it just looks cool. To be fair, you might not have mid 20th century industrial artifacts sitting on your bookshelf and might need to settle for something a bit more commonplace, but we do, so we're gonna run with it. Now comes the fun part, taking the photos. For this capture, we'll use the rotation or orbit photo capture method. This involves circling the subject several times while taking photos at regular intervals. Each circuit around the gear will be at slightly different heights to ensure full coverage of the subject. For the best possible results, we want to capture as much of the subject as possible in each photo. Standing too far away from the subject may result in a low resolution model or introduce parts of the background into the 3D model itself, something we definitely want to avoid. Standing in front of the subject, we center the iPhone's camera along the center line of the gear and take our first photo. We next take a small step to the right and rotate the iPhone no more than about 15 degrees from the first photo and take another photo. Take another step, rotate the iPhone, take a photo, and so on until we complete the circuit. We don't have to be perfectly accurate with our stance. We'll be fine if we shoot around 30 photos per circuit. What we don't want is to take, say, only five photos in one circuit, as that will fail in the 3D construction step. As we circle the subject, the desk becomes a slight obstacle we'll have to navigate around to complete the first circuit. In this case, simply walking around the desk and resuming the photo process is an easy solution. For the next circuit, we raise the camera slightly above the subject and rotate it to face the gear. This angle should be about 15 degrees above the plane of our previous orbit. We have a bit of latitude in the angle between the two circuits, so we don't worry too much about being perfect. As before, we maintain a 15 degree or less rotation between each photo as we make our orbit. We need one more circuit around the subject this time shooting from tabletop level up towards the gear. This requires us to squat down into a rather uncomfortable position to take the photos. There is one trick we can try here. By rotating the iPhone 180 degrees, the lens of the camera is much lower, which makes it a bit easier on our back during the circuit around the subject.
There is one feature of the gear that requires special attention, the hole through the center of the gear. Context capture can only capture what it can see, so we'll need to give some special attention to this detail. Returning to the front of the gear, we align the iPhoto to the far left edge with the iPhone's lens at the same level as the center of the hole, and we take a photo. Now, we move to the right about one-third of the image on the iPhone screen, and we take another photo. We do this a few more times until we reach the right edge of the subject. We repeat this photo technique on the opposite end of the gear. At this point, we have all of the photos needed to create our first 3D model. Using this consistent and deliberate method to taking the photos greatly enhances the final outcome of the overall 3D capture process. In the next video of this series, you will learn how to import the photos into Context Capture and begin the process of generating the 3D model. If you have questions about what we just covered, please visit the Reality Modeling Forum on Bentley Communities at the link provided in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to follow along with the rest of this video series. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.